Hello everyone, this is a short video on tips of how to grow a grafted fruit tree successfully, whether that's apples, pears, cherries, or plums, or other fruit. And this is particularly aimed at people who um, are new to growing grafted fruit trees. Let's say that you've purchased a discount fruit tree which is on a grafted dwarf rootstock, for instance something like an apple or a pear. Here we have an example of a grafted pear tree on a dwarf rootstock. First thing you're going to do is have to plant it in a place where there's plenty of light, plenty of air and plenty of space around the tree. If it's in a crowded little suburban garden you are going to struggle and you might be better off with having one in a pot, i.e. a patio dwarf version. This pear tree is now three years old on top of the age when it was bought. Possibly it was three years old on the graft. It was quite a tall specimen from a discount place. Now, first problem you've got is you've got to make sure that it's got plenty of air around it so it needs to be pruned correctly no higher than 1.8 meters even shorter if if you can because remember this is basically just a branch from a pear tree which has been grafted onto a dwarf rootstock in some ways you should treat it like that it is just a branch growing vertically prune any side branches going inwards so that all branches where possible are facing outwards from the tree that way you're not going to get any problems with fungus and other diseases or you're not going to get, allow them as much chance to get a hold on the plant. Try and make sure that there is no competition for light and nutrients too close to the tree. There's no point in crowding fruit trees, even grafted ones, you will not be successful because it simply will not get enough light and air movement. It needs air to be moving around it and it needs access to light. That way the fruits can ripen. When the tree is dormant, i.e. in bud, that's the best time to dig up some garlic bulbs, crush them with a pestle and mortar, add some water, filter it and make your own spray. A perfect deterrent for things like fungi and pests that can overwinter. These will form what's known as a canker particularly fungi on the tree. Here is a canker on an apple tree. This is where I have to spray, particularly in winter and also during the spring and summer I also spray as well. You can use garlic but you can also use another solution which is very handy as well. You will need one part milk, I use full fat, you can use skimmed, with two parts water, a few drops of ordinary washing up liquid, and also you can add two or three teaspoons of this stuff, it's bicarbonate of soda. Mix it all up, shake it all up and the whole thing should make a dissolved solution which you can then put in a simple spray bottle. I wash out old bottles which are spray bottles, this one here was just a target spray. Experiment with some of them, some of them just don't like being reused again and they'll just have to be recycled. This one works very well for me. Try not to spray when the tree is in blossom because obviously pollinators are not going to be attracted to the smell of your antifungal agent. Okay, the idea of the bicarb is also to be antifungal but also to deter ants which feed from aphids. Aphids will attack things like fruit trees, they'll suck at the sap, then ants will use them like a milk cow. They'll basically come up to a tree and feed from the sap which the aphids have got. Okay, and you might see ants running up and down your fruit tree. That's why bi bicarb on its own can also act to help to deter ants around. Any ants nest around the tree, destroy them. Use boiling water, don't kill the tree roots, or use bicarb. Do not let ants anywhere near they don't do any good on an allotment, they just get into roots and kill things. Next point, pollination. Do not rely on pollinators in your area cross-pollinating your pear trees. You can end up with no crop even though you have fantastic blossom on your trees. Trees often blossom in places like the UK very early on and a good example of that is plum trees. They will come into blossom even in February and you are going to have to do the work yourself if you want plums. 
basically you need the following a couple of watercolour artist brushes are all you need one per type of tree if it's pear then stick to say one use that just for pear trees and you go around and you pick up pollen that is from the male part and you'll see what pollen looks like it's basically in the flower it's the part that comes off as dust and then you must go around to other flowers from another pear tree and just brush each flower and try and get the middle of the flower that's where the female part is the stigma style and ovary that's the carpal and basically then you've then pollinated the tree and you can do thousands and thousands very quickly just by dusting around like a bumblebee would and that way you'll get a better crop if you know what pollination group your pear tree is in from its label then you can buy a number of different types of pears that can cross pollinate and this makes the job even better for apples crab apples can be very useful to cross pollinate apple trees or look up the pollinating group this particular pear tree was pollinated by me I cross pollinated it using pollen from another pear tree and as you can see it's set fruit and I'm looking forward to a nice bumper crop on this dwarf rootstock graft so basically this is just a branch had I not intervened I do not think I would have had this crop and also I've had to constantly spray this tree before the blossom came using my milk bicarbon detergent solution and also this tree was attacked by something called pear rust and was nearly killed last year by pear rust I identified the problem and with pear rust basically you have to remove the affected leaves leaving enough on so the tree can stay alive before it goes dormant and spray spray with the milk bicarbon detergent like I said there's no other simple solution to pear rust that I know of and I do not use chemical sprays that you can buy from garden centres because if you put a chemical on your fruit tree it could end up in your fruit think about that so try and use things that, which are environmentally friendly like garlic against canker or milk bicarb and detergent this is the way I could advise you to grow a simple tree such as a pear tree on a graft of rootstock it's not as simple as may seem but th this does work this is a russet apple which has been cross pollinated using the paint brush method the artist watercolor paint brush method and it's now May the 9th basically this tree has set fruit and but it's had to be sprayed continuously with the solution as described it's on a dwarf root stock had I, had, the, had I not intervened this tree would have succumbed to fungi and not had any fruit on it remember the immune system on, a, on one of these dwarf rootstocks is nothing like as powerful as on a full tree and this needs your intervention to survive fungal spores can be resident in cankers and then in the springtime can it literally explode onto blossom this particular branch has been attacked I've had to remove a place where there were uh, fruit setting and it was attacked by ants I've just basically taken it out and sprayed sprayed underneath this as well That's, this is my spray on it to kill fungus the whole branch was attacked yet still some fruit will set at this end and I've sprayed along and you have to be very patient when you're spraying these grafted trees there's no way around it the fungi is airborne it's windborne on spores pear trees up and down the UK are being attacked by pear rust this is an apple tree but still the same type of fungi is attacking it and the leaves but I'm still going to get a crop from it because I have to be vigilant and that way the fruit will set as you can see on clay soils or any soil which breaks up when it's dry this is where ants will get in I tend to spray bicarb down these cracks to get at the ants they do not like bicarb it's opposite to the acid they make in pH value um, ants also love to reside under paving slabs so early on when you're on an allotment if you have any fruit trees be aware of the fact that you may well you have to lift up your paving slabs regularly I don't set mine I have them loose because ants love to actually overwinter underneath them I tend to turn them all underneath don't kill any worms obviously and uh, basically just see if I can flush out any ants nest they need you need to destroy any ants nest under your paving slabs they will destroy crops strawberries fruit trees the lot notice the discoloration on this part of the branch here compared to the normal healthy part this tells me that this particular branch here needs spraying with my solution 
the whole of the tree could be covered it if you don't and damp still air which is in high humidity which happens in springtime is also a great helper for fungi to get a grip on your tree sunshine and dry air make it harder for fungi but in, if it's overcast damp on still air and highly humid then a tree such as this little little apple tree on a graph can be literally almost eaten alive by fungi so be careful and be vigilant if you want a crop take your time when spraying and aim every individual branch on your graph to tree that way you can make sure there's nowhere that escapes your spray so the fungi has nowhere to hide particularly where branches come out from the tree this is where it will get a grip on your tree and also along they'll sometimes underneath one one particular branch will be a weak spot You've got, you, there's no substitute I sometimes have to spray twice a week with this solution there's no alternative because otherwise I'll lose the crop with plum trees you're going to have to act quickly. If they're coming to blossom in late February and early March, you're going to have to start cross-pollinating then with your paintbrush. This is the only way I've got, I've got a crop on this particular plum tree. So basically, there weren't enough pollinators around, so I went around the, the blossoms myself, picking the pollen off other plum trees and bringing it to the female part, that's the middle part of the flower, that's the, the part that sticks out in the middle, um, and that way, if you're pollinating the carpal, um, the stigma, that's a, that's a sticky part of the female part that sticks out of the flower yourself you're going to get some fruit so I'm looking forward to these plums ripening but I'm going to carry on spraying though because there are also insects that attack fruit fungi can come back again apple trees generally tend to come into blossom later than plum trees and there'll be more pollinators around this particular apple tree some fruit is just setting but some blossom is still around this fruit tree is called red discovery last year when I didn't know how to successfully look after it it nearly died from disease this year after spraying judicious pruning etc it sprung back to life but I'm not complacent you can see it's still got fungal attack there on that little branch there so I'm gonna to have to spray it again but beware about spraying be very careful spraying when you've got blossom I try to stick just to the branch areas and miss the blossom and these areas where you can get canker here where the branches meet and it will still need more pruning but really I'll let this go out of control and its pollinating partner is a bramley which is over there which is set fruit across the other side of the arch both of them dwarf rootstock I'm looking forward to a good crop of bramley apples on that one